Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at signs of respiratory distress. So here are my references, that's the Sunflower book as a textbook, and a series of YouTube videos to demonstrate each of these signs. So there are moderate features and severe features of respiratory distress. Moderate features, you can think in terms of the vital signs, and then the signs that you can observe on the infant or baby himself or herself. So for vital signs, think log logically, right? So when you don't have enough oxygen going to your brain or your other cells in, the, in your body, um, your body compensates by breathing faster. So the air exchange increases. And then your circulation also has to increase to carry that uh, oxygen that is going into your lungs. So your heart rate increases. So the signs that you can see are tachypnea, you breathe faster, as well as tachycardia, your heart beats faster than usual. So other than the vital signs, you can see um, things that you can see, you can think in terms of head to toe. So in the head, you can see head retraction or head bobbing. Um, in the nose, you can see nasal flaring. In the neck area, you can hear grunting. You can see suprasternal retractions. In the chest area, you can see intercostal and subcostal recession. And in the abdominal area, you can see abdominal breathing. And of course, when the baby is already having trouble breathing, they are unable to latch on to the mother's nipple to breastfeed. So there's a poor feeding as well. Severe features, uh, the baby already got tired. So tiring because of increased work of breathing, uh, reduced consciousness level is already very severe. And the oxygen saturation is low, less than 92% despite oxygen therapy. And because of this low oxygen saturation, you can see cyanosis, which is um, bluish tinge on the skin. So um, because... Um, Deoxygenated blood is darker than oxygenated blood, and because of the wavelength, uh, when the light hits your skin, um, and uh, it appears blue when you see from the surface of the skin, although it's, the blood is actually dark red. Right, here's a visual representation of what I've mentioned just now. Uh, but this is only for the moderate features. So um, the vital signs, tachypnea and tachycardia, plus the rest here. So nasal flaring on the nose, head bobbing, grunting, suprasternal retraction on the neck area, intercostal retraction and subcostal retraction in the chest area, and abdominal breathing in the abdominal area. So first we'll be looking at tachypnea and tachycardia. So what do you need to know? Usually the parent, the mother will know, um, oh, my baby is breathing faster than usual. That's when they bring the baby to clinics or hospitals. And that's when you assess them. So to know tachypnea and tachycardia, you will need to know the normal values. And you need to know the thresholds for tachypnea and tachycardia. And you know this by observing and counting the number of breaths in one minute and palpating their pulse, how many beats per minute. So here are the normal uh, the thresholds for tachypnea and tachycardia in different age groups. So you need to um, commit these to memory. The different age groups, there are six age groups. And so six numbers to remember for tachypnea and six numbers to remember for tachycardia. I made a video about how I came up with these numbers. It's from various sources of um, online resources. Uh, I'll put a link to the video if you're interested. But it's uh, it's a quite a lengthy video. Right. So um, the age groups that you need to remember is uh, from zero to four weeks. They are known as neonates. Uh, one uh, less than one year old, so four weeks old to one year old. They're known as infants. Um, 
one year to two year old, the term is toddler. Two year old to five year old, the term is young child. Five year old to twelve years old, the term is older child. And then twelve years old to eighteen years old, the term is adolescent. So for tachypnea, remember, um, sixty to twenty. So twenty and hundred is the norm, normal values for adults as well. So adults is um twelve to twenty respiratory rate, and then sixty to hundred um heart rate, right? So this is the upper limit, which tells you they're going to tachypnea and tachycardia. For tachypnea, which is increased respiratory rate, you want to remember from sixty to twenty, and then each step, each age group, you deduct by ten. Except for thirty five, so remember, uh, if sixty you go down by ten, you get fifty. Go down by another ten, you get forty. And then remember, there's a thirty five. So before thirty, you get thirty five. Then thirty. Then go down by another ten, you get twenty. So this is how I remember the tachypnea threshold values. Tachycardia, on the other hand, you remember hundred eighty. Go down. So you go down by ten. Two times. Then after that, you go down by twenty. You go down by ten until you reach a hundred sixty. Then after that, you go down by twenty. So hundred and eighty go down by ten. You got hundred and seventy go down by ten. You got hundred sixty. Then after that, once you reach hundred sixty, you go down by twenty. So the next one is hundred forty, hundred twenty, and then hundred beats per minute. Right. So it it might be overwhelming to remember at first, but um practice makes perfect. As you see more um, children, or you practice more, then you get uh, you remember these values. Right. Um, next, we'll be lo looking at the signs that you can observe on the infant himself or herself. So first, we're looking at nasal flaring. So this is nasal flaring. can see the nose is flaring over here to increase the size of the nostrils so more air can enter. Next we'll be looking at head bobbing. So probably you can see in the younger, maybe neonates and infants, you can see head bobbing. Grunting. Um, this next video you need to listen very carefully. The mechanism of grunting is that um, they want to maintain something known as PEEP, PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure. By maintaining this PEEP, they can keep the alveoli open for gas exchange to continue. So how they maintain PEEP is by closing the glottis during expiration. And um, that's what produces this grunting noise. You need to listen carefully for this grunting during expiration in this next video. I hope you were able to appreciate the grunting noise. And the next one we'll be looking at is suprasternal retraction. It's a video. Right. And then the next video we can see intercostal retraction, subcostal retraction, and abdominal breathing all in the same video. So let's have a look at the video. So you can see abdominal breathing here. The abdomen is going up and down. You can see subcostal recession here. That's below the lowest rib here. There's a recession. And also intercostal recessions, you see. The ribs get more pronounced. Yep. So all three features. And the next video is in a younger child showing subcostal recession. See, it's more obvious. And also sometimes you call this seesaw breathing because the abdomen goes up and the chest goes down. Yeah, I can't play this. Okay, 
I think that's all I have for you. Um, hope it's helpful. Thank you for watching.